Hi, Keith Alwineal here. Uh, just wanted to give everyone a November 2nd update on where the school is and also a little bit about what we've done the last few months uh, with some changes to adapt to the new environment uh, that we're all living in in order for us to keep the school open. So one of the things that we did uh, differently, obviously, is the temperature checks in the morning. That makes drop off a little bit longer and it takes a few more minutes to get through. And I appreciate everyone's patience for doing that because uh, it is just super important for us to make sure that the kids coming in the building do not have a fever and obviously don't have symptoms. Uh, mentioned before, we have hand sanitizer stations all over the school. We do have kids come in in the morning or when they're coming in from recess and wash their hands or use the hand sanitizers um, just to make sure that it's clean as they, they walk back in the classrooms. And we do have directional arrows throughout the building. So we have kids walking one way uh, and then walking back uh, a different direction. It's kind of like lanes on the highway is sort of how that piece looks. In the beginning of the school year, we had our cohorts separate. When we combined the cohorts last week or two weeks ago, we went ahead and we keep those classes separate. So for example, you might have two fifth grade classes, but they don't play together. They don't have any activities together. They don't have recess together. Um, they're separate all the way through the day. They don't even have lunch together, which gets me to another change we made, which is the lunch locations. We have uh, socially distanced lunches in the gym and the cafeteria, or students are eating in their classroom with just their class. So those were some changes we made. So in case we have a kid that gets sick or a staff member that gets sick, we minimize the number of people that they're around. So that was a big change. In order to do that, we had a block schedule change. And this is especially true for middle school. The block schedule in middle school means they have those two hour blocks. And then we brought Spanish in as the extra class. So we have three two hour blocks one day and then we do that schedule for two days. And then on Thursday and Friday, we have three two-hour blocks of, of different classes. So you might have science, math, and literature one day, then also writing, social studies, and Spanish. So we needed to have a, a sixth class to round out that schedule. And Spanish is that sixth class for middle school. Um, another move we made is that everyone has that extra space. I talked about that in the last video. So all grade levels have an extra classroom that they can use and it's only for that grade level or in middle school's case, they have two extra spaces for them to use. And again, with just that class using that or maybe breaking that class in half to give the kids a little more room. And that's especially going to be more important as the school year goes on and the weather gets a little colder. We can't go outside as much as we do. Uh, we've also been in regular communication with Tri-County Health. Obviously, you guys through email, the website, the videos. Uh, we have a, fortunately, we're really lucky to have an LPN on staff. Um, and then we also have a nurse consultant with Children's Hospital that we've been working with um, as well. And so whenever a kid uh, has reported symptoms or a family calls us, we just walk through with that family, whether they should get tested, if those are significant symptoms. Um, and whether their children can come to school or not. So those are the things that we you know, kind of work through on a case-by-case -case basis. And we're really trying to keep school as normal as possible. Um, so I think the biggest change that parents would see is at dismissal at the end of the day, we're not opening driveline until three o'clock. And the reason is in the past, we've had about 150, 160 cars a day. Now we're running 220 to 225 cars a day and obviously just creates a lot more traffic. So if we don't close off driveline, what happens is cars come out of the fire lane all the way out into the street and block the street in both directions. And that is something the city won't allow us to do. So the idea of opening driveline at three is that we're not blocking uh, the city streets. We open it up and then start dismissal soon afterwards. If you get here before three, my recommendation is find a, a legal place to park on the street, park in the parking lot, or better yet, if you can wait, come at 3.30 when the line is a little bit shorter. So I know it's super busy at the end of the day, but it's the only way that we can manage uh, many, many more cars coming through and make sure that we can get uh, dismissal done, um, you know, within about 30 minutes. So 
I want to make sure that uh, you guys have that information and uh, follow those guidelines. So just in conclusion, I just want to say we're trying to keep school as normal as possible in a really abnormal time. And it's one of those things where uh, I've had a lot of positive comments from parents and families who appreciate the efforts uh, that we're making to try to keep school open and keep school safe. So I want to thank everybody for their support and continued support. We're going to just see how the school year goes and play it sort of day by day. But each day we're open, I think, is a victory. So thanks again, everybody, and stay safe.